In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to properly diaphragmatically breathe, AKA 360 degree breathing, which is what I like to call it, as well as go over what diaphragmatic breathing is and why it is absolutely essential for your pelvic health and wellness. Hey y'all, I'm Dr. Mae Hughes, a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in women's pelvic health. I'm also a certified strength and conditioning coach and mom of two. Now let's go ahead and go over what diaphragmatic breathing is. So your diaphragm is your muscle of respiration and it sits at the base of your ribs, it attaches 360 degrees around your ribs. When you inhale, your diaphragm contracts and lengthens and descends as it pulls air into the lungs. That is how a breath works. And then when you passively exhale, your diaphragm will passively recoil back to its resting state. So it actually contracts when you inhale and it lengthens and descends and then it passively recoils and ascends as you exhale. Now, why is it so important for your pelvic health? Well, if your diaphragm sits at the base of your ribs, your pelvic floor sits at the top or base of your pelvis. And so when you take an inhale and your diaphragm lengthens and lowers, your pelvic floor also needs to lengthen and lower in order to maintain proper intra-abdominal pressure in your abdominal cavity. So the diaphragm and the pelvic floor work together like a piston. When the diaphragm lengthens and lowers, the pelvic floor should also lengthen and lower. When the diaphragm passively recoils, the pelvic floor should also recoil up and in as well. If at any point, either of those two muscles or group of muscles are not working properly or there's some sort of dysfunction, then that's where pelvic floor dysfunction can play a role. Now, why am I teaching you how to properly diaphragmatically breathe? It's because a lot of us were never taught how to do this or don't know exactly how to do it. So because your diaphragm sits at the base of your ribs and it's that fan-shaped muscle, when you inhale, you should actually get full 360 degree expansion of your ribs into the front of your ribs, into the sides of the ribs, into the back of your ribs. You will also get expansion into your belly, the sides of your abdominals, your lower back, and down into your pelvic floor. Imagine that balloon in your abdominal cavity. When you inhale, you're inflating it in 360 degrees. If you're not getting full 360 degree expansion of your diaphragm, then you're probably not getting full lengthening of your pelvic floor. For instance, if you only breathe into the front of your ribs, then you might only be getting lengthening in the front part of your diaphragm, which might result in only getting lengthening of the front part of your pelvic floor, which can lead to tightness in the back of your pelvic floor and maybe tightness in the back of your ribs. We know that tightness in the posterior aspect of your pelvic floor can cause or contribute to issues like constipation, pelvic pain, low back pain, and so many other dysfunctions. So in an ideal world, both groups of muscles will properly lengthen and expand 360 degrees, and then they will properly recoil and passively lift up and in. Now there is a time and place where you will actively contract your pelvic floor, but this is not the video for that. We are just talking about passive diaphragmatic breathing. Okay, now let's practice it. I'm gonna have you first lay on your back, so it's usually the most comfortable position to start in. You're gonna lay flat on your back with your knees bent and feet flat on the ground. Make yourself comfortable with a pillow. I want you to place your hands on either sides of your ribs so, your pink, so the front of your fingertips are in the front of your ribs and then your thumb pads are in the back of your ribs or as close to the back as possible. You are going to inhale through your nose and try and expand your ribs 360 degrees into your hands. Inhale here and then just exhale, let it all go. What did you notice? Were you able to breathe into all parts of your hand? Were you able to breathe into the front fingertips? Were you able to breathe into the heel of your hand? Were you able to breathe into the thumbs? Inhale again. And exhale, let it go. What a lot of us lack is that posterior expansion into the back of the ribs. That's why when you're laying flat on your back, it is a good cue to breathe down into the mat or wherever you're kind of laying on to help expand the back of the ribs. 
Now some common compensations or incorrect breathing patterns are people who breathe just into their chest. And with that, you will see almost a rise of the shoulders and your belly will actually suck in. It looks like this. Notice how it was only my chest that was expanding. I was using the muscles in my neck and then the belly kind of went in. The opposite of that, which is also not correct, is just belly breathing. And I think a lot of people think belly breathing is diaphragmatic breathing, but it is not the same because belly breathing focuses on just expansion of that belly when you inhale. And while yes, we do want some belly expansion when we inhale for diaphragmatic breathing, we want it to be evenly distributed along the abdominal cavity. And if you have only belly breathing, then you are missing that component of breathing into the back as well as breathing down into the pelvic floor. So let's go ahead, practice again, fingertips in the front, thumb pads in the back, breathe into that heel portion of your hand. and exhale, let it go. It might feel difficult for you at first, and that's totally normal. Maybe you feel like you can get the ribs to expand, but you're having a hard time with getting both the belly and chest to expand. Now, it's not just the chest and it's not just the belly, it's both of them gently inflating. So let's try with one hand on our chest and one hand on our belly. Maybe even lower that hand to over the pubic bone and feel the pubic bone region expand to feel that pelvic floor lengthening. And exhale, let it go. If laying flat on your back is not doing the trick for you, then let's go ahead and roll onto your side. Doesn't matter which side, you can perform this on either side. And I want you to have both your knees stacked on top of one another and bring them in closer towards your chest. This is going to round out your lower back and it's almost going to compress your belly to force the air into the back of your rib cage and the lower back musculature and the back of that pelvic floor. So place your hand on top of the top rib cage. Inhale here. And exhale, let it go. You should feel the ribs expand down into the mat below you. You should feel them also expand up into the hand on top. And then you should really feel that lower back musculature expand. If you're not feeling that, I want you to place your hand so your hand is covering your anal sphincter and then the, your forearm portion is on your lower back. And now I want you to take that same inhale and try and direct your air into those portions of your hand. Inhale here. and exhale. Did you feel a little bit of pressure when you inhale, go down into your pelvic floor? That's a good sign. That means that you are lengthening that pelvic floor. Maybe now put your hand on your lower back. Same thing, inhale here. And exhale, let it go. Did you feel that expansion into your lower back? That's great. That means you're starting to get that full 360 degree expansion. I wanna practice in one more position in case being flat on your back or on your side it didn't help you. This is one of my favorite positions to get into that posterior musculature. This is called rock back breathing. If you have a yoga block, go ahead and grab one. If you don't, that's okay. So if you have a yoga block, you're going to lay it on your mat and you're actually going to place it between your forearms. Palms are gonna be up towards the sky. You're sitting back on your heels. You're rounding your spine and you're squeezing that yoga block together with your forearms. And in this rounded spine position, we're doing the same thing that we were doing on our side, but just in a more exaggerated fashion. We are blocking out the belly and forcing the air to go into our lower back. So you squeeze that yoga block, palms up towards the sky, press your forearms down into the ground as well. And now inhale, through your nose, expanding 360 degrees. And exhale, let it go. Did you feel expansion into your bra strap region? Did you feel it into your lower back? Did you feel it into your anal sphincter? If you didn't feel one of those areas, place a hand on one of those areas and see if you can direct your air into that area. Inhale here. and exhale. So 
those are the three common positions I like to teach 360 degree breathing, AKA diaphragmatic breathing in. And if you didn't get it in any of those positions, keep trying, keep re-watching this video, listening to those cues about where to breathe. Think of that imagery of your ribs expanding 360 degrees. Close your eyes, maybe imagine that lengthening down into your pelvic floor, that balloon inflating. Because if you've been breathing only with your chest or only with your belly for a long time, it's gonna be hard to get out of that breathing activation pattern. And so you're kind of rewiring your brain and rewiring your brain takes a little bit of time. There also might be some things in terms of restriction or tightness in your lower back that you might need to work on in order to gain more length in your lower back so you can actually breathe into that area. I hope this video helped and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna keep seeing more videos like this.